Well, we're going to continue in our series today, In My Right Mind, and uh, I want to know if I'm in the right place. How many uh, warriors do we have in the room today? Raise your hand. Raise your hand high so you can be proud. We're going to start a lot of groups out of this one here, right there. Okay, a lot of warriors in the room. I had this crazy idea. It's a really stupid idea, but I thought, you know, what, what if we could? I mean, let me, I got to ask questions. I need your help, participation in this one. How many of you... You, um, you pay someone to mow your lawn now. Raise your hand. Okay. That's a good praise the Lord. God bless you. How many of you pay someone to take care of your pool? I mean, raise your hand. Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? Anywhere? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go. How many of you pay someone to do your hair? Okay. A lot more there. First and second service, hardly anyone. It was like weird, you know? Okay. So, so here's the thing. I thought, you know, since we're going to talk on worry, what if it were possible to pay someone to worry for us. What if every first of the month that person came by and said, I'm here again, we give them $100 and the list of our worries and they take it and they worry for us. Would it be worth it? Wouldn't that be great if we could do that? Now let's be clear and honest again. How many really, come on really, worry, anxious, nervy types, how many like that in the room? Okay, so we're, you're in the right place. We're going to talk about that today because, uh, you know, worry is a good one to talk about to be in our right mind as we're going to see today. Now, I looked up some, um, some symptoms or results of worry, the effects on the human body. I'm not a physician, but I know how to maneuver through the internet, okay? How many of you are married to, related to a person with an online medical degree? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, they're online always looking at the, oh my, I got this symptom, you know. Anybody? You're related to them or married to them? Anybody? Okay, yeah, because they know everything about medical field now. So here are some that I, I found. These are actual, uh, you know, symptoms. They're results of a, of a worry, worry of some life. It says, first off, there can be panic. A sense of impending doom. Something bad going to happen. And I have found that all worry is, is laser-focused thinking on a negative. So it's impending doom. We can lose sleep. It affects our appetite. Digestive problems. How about this one? We get irritable. Point to the person who's irritable. How about, well, headaches. Anybody get headaches? from that? Maybe. It can lead to harmful lifestyle habits to combat stress, you know, smoke something, drink something, whatever, to combat your nervousness in life, and it leads to addictions. Worry doesn't, uh, doesn't, it doesn't care what your age is. It doesn't discriminate with your gender or your ethnicity. It's an equal opportunity employer. Worry will affect anyone. Now, we're going to talk about the day Jesus is going to give us. Uh, there's four points I'll give you, but there's about seven or eight in the text we're going to turn to. But first, the only verses that I'm going to, verse I'm going to ask you to read today is our key verse for the series. It's our third week in now, and it's been a pretty good series, I think. Put Proverbs 23, 7 up on the screen, and let's read it together. And it says, here it goes, For as thinks within himself so... He is. He says to you, eat and drink. But his heart is not with you. Now, here's the test now, because we've gone through it twice. The word think in there, as he thinks within himself, so he is. The word think means to act as a act as a gatekeeper. In other words, I have the door to my mind. I let things in or I keep things out. I am to let the right things in, and I'm to keep the wrong thinking out. That's as simple as it gets, my friend. Because as a gatekeeper, as I think, so I am, which is our tagline, is this. What happens in here happens out there. Say it louder. What happens here happens out there. Now, let's use the hand motions like we've been doing every week. Here we go. What happens in here happens out there. Now, some of you will not move your hand for anything. Grab the person next to you and move the hand, okay? Here we go. What happens in here happens out there. Wherever you go, you take your mind with you. Am I correct? 
No, Jim, I leave mine at home. No, you take it with you wherever you go. Turn to Matthew 6 in your Bible or your app. We're going to look at what Jesus says about worry. Because Jesus had a lot to say about a person who worries, anxiety, frets about things, obsesses about things. He had a lot to say about that. So I'm going to give you four points, like I said, and I'm going to then read the verses as I go along, comment as I go, and hopefully at the end of this, it will help us be in our right mind. So number one, if you're taking notes to wipe out worry, first off, don't try to erase it. Instead, uh, replace it. Don't try to erase it. Instead, replace it. Now watch verse 25 of Matthew 6, what Jesus says. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life. He's saying, no, just don't, don't worry. And we say, that's easier said than done. But he's going to tell us how not to worry. He said, don't worry about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? It's an agricultural society. So they think about what they're going to, what their harvest is. They think about the early and the latter rains. They worry about these things. For you and I, it would just be stuff. We worry about, you know, will I ever be able to do this? You know, will I make this ring? Will I ever buy a house? Will I ever, uh, will I get that job? Will I not, will I keep a job? Well, you know, will I ever meet the right person? Well, you know, we worry about so many things. Will my kids grow up to be normal? Will they not go off the deep? How many we know we worry, right? We worry about money, don't we? Now, the word worry that Jesus uses, the Greek word, is, is vitally important to understand what worry is. Because the word worry literally means to pull apart. It would be the idea, I think I put on Facebook this week, where you tie a horse to one side of your mind, tie another horse to the other side of your mind, and it pulls your thinking apart. You should be thinking here, but worry pulls it this way, so your mind begins to split all over the place in your thinking. Does that make sense? Now, look at verse 26. Because now he's going to tell us how we do this. How do I overcome worry if I'm a worry ward or worry gets a good grip on me? Verse 26, watch. Look at the birds. Look at the birds of the air. That they do not sow. They don't plant stuff. Remember, it's an agricultural society nor reap, nor gather into barns. They don't harvest anything. Agricultural society back then. And yet your heavenly, louder, heavenly father, that's an important word, your father in heaven. That's going to be big later on in this message. Your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Read on. Yeah, now, Verse 27 is a whole point I could have done about, you know, seven, eight minutes on it, but I didn't have enough time and room in this message. But watch. And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to your life? Have you ever noticed that worry does not extend your life? If anything, worry, it shortens a person's life. Nothing is accomplished by worrying or living anxiety-ridden. Uh, nothing, he's telling you, nothing. Verse 28. And why are you worried about clothing? Man, that's a good verse for young people, huh? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Look, look at the flowers. They're not out there working hard. And look how beautiful they look. God takes care of them, my friends. Now watch what Jesus said in those verses right here. He says, look at the birds. If you're a worry ward, stress gets you, anxiety gets you, look at birds. And when he uses the word look, it means to really focus on those birds. Take a good look at birds. So I have a question. How many of you, should be everyone, have ever seen a bird in your yard, in a tree, or seen a bird on a, I don't know, a electrical line wire, or seen a bird on top of a fence? How many have ever seen that before? Raise your hand. Some of you have never seen that before, huh? <laughs> wow, okay. 
Joel, you've never seen that before? Wow, okay, I'm just shocked at that. Now, when you see, have seen that bird, except for Joel has never seen that bird. When you've seen that bird up there, have you ever seen that bird up on that fence, line, pole, tree, whatever? You ever seen that bird look around and go, man, I'm really stressed out today, man. You ever seen that? You ever see them go, oh my gosh, I got to get so many more twigs for the nest, man, this, this nest is falling apart, you know, I don't even want to get an estimate, it costs so much money to fix this thing, oh my gosh, I got five mouths to feed, I got mouths to feed, my wife, she's in there going, bah, 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 bah. you know, it, it's just a stressful life, you only get one per service, at. Bah, bah, bah. that's it, man, now, have you ever seen bird stress, the answer is, you better say no, okay, they don't, they don't worry. They don't worry because he says, your heavenly father takes care of them now. God supplies it and they got to go get it. I'm not saying don't work. You got to work. Don't think someone's going to give you something for free because America is turning into that. And you need to work, my friends. Any amens on that one? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like a better amen. Any amens on that one? Yeah. That's right. You know, you work, my friend. Don't sit there and say, what handout can I get next? No, make it a better country by working, my friend. So, so the bird, I'll, I'll preach another message if you want right now. <laughs> Don't get me riled up, right? And so, um, and so think about the birds. They, they don't, they're not worrying because the Heavenly Father supplies for them. Question. He says, are you not worth much more than a bird? Question, how much, how do you determine the worth of something? Somebody said, what? What somebody's willing to pay. What somebody's willing to pay. Question, how much was paid for your salvation? Which means how much was paid for your soul? What was the price? Jesus' life, he died for you. That was the price. How much are you worth? Come on, how much are you worth? Don't make me work hard, okay? It's third service. I'm old, I'm tired. How much are you worth? If you're worth the life of Jesus, you're worth everything. That's how much value you have. And don't let anyone ever tell you that. And don't diminish yourself by living a sinful life. Live it right. You're worth so much. Live it right, my friends. He says, your heavenly father, he takes care of birds. Folk, look at this. Are you not worth much more than they? He's not just talking about birds. He's talking about truth. Get truth in you. Now, in your notes or on the screen, this is a big statement. Truth affects emotions when, say the word, believed. Truth affects emotions when believed. Say it with me. Truth affects emotions when believe you got to believe it you can't just say oh that was true but you got to believe it or else it doesn't affect your emotion now think about this have you ever noticed and this is a spiritual battle now have you ever noticed that worry or stress or anxiety just kind of pops out of nowhere into your soul and mind anybody notice that you don't know when it's coming you cannot plan for it on the calendar it just pops in you could be sitting there at a theater watching a movie you like, and all of a sudden, this thought comes in your mind. Am I right? And you start to stress, and you don't even know what Gumby did on the screen for 20 minutes. Because all you're thinking about is, you know, dot, 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 dot. So that's what happens in our emotions. But if we apply truth, so truth affects emotions when? When? believe David says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death is that emotion say yeah that's right though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will I fear no evil that's truth right for you are with me that's truth right so he's walking with him I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death this is going to be it's bad but you know what thou art with me thou art with me he applies truth to his emotions in that moment because truth affects emotions when unbelief. Watch, let me give you a couple of Bible truths that are vital to this idea of eliminating worry in our life. The first one is Isaiah 26.3. Stumbled upon this verse 30 some years ago, never forgot this one. Now, read it with me. It says, the steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because 
He trusts in you. Now, the word steadfast means to lean upon. If I lean upon God and his truth, he will keep me this inside in perfect peace. Are you following me so far? Say, I'm tracking with you, Jim. Okay, now, let me give you another verse that really complements that one. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Another lean on him. Don't lean on your own thinking. Don't lean on what you think. Oh, I can just do it. Don't lean. Lean on what God says. Now, how many of you in this room have ever had vertigo? I've had vertigo three times in my life. How many have never had vertigo in your life? Raise your hand. You've never had vertigo. You're missing out, my friends. You don't even need to go to Disneyland if you have vertigo. How many have no idea what vertigo is? You thought it was a movie from Alfred Hitchcock. Okay. Okay. Here's vertigo. Vertigo is... You, you get off balance. The first time, I, I just couldn't believe the first time I got it, how it affected me. I mean, I, I, I was a point guard in basketball. And then when I got vertigo, I was in late, late 30s, I couldn't even stand up without falling over because everything is thrown off. And I remember that to make it from our bedroom, down the hall, along the living room, into the TV room, into the kitchen, I had to lean against the walls. And walk like, because if I didn't, guess what? I'm going down because I'm, I'm this way and I'm this. It's weird not being able to stand straight up. Let me tell you, I needed something stationary, immovable, and straight to guide me where I'm going. Our emotions are like vertigo. You're all over the place. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Anyone know what I'm talking about? The mind splits. We're all over the place. We need something that is stationary, immovable, that keeps us on a straight path, and that's God's truth. Any amens on that one right there? Truth affects emotions when believed. Okay, I'll take that one. Number two in your notes, change your self-talk. Change your self-talk. Now watch you know, I've been reading the Bible 40 years, and I never caught this word. And I'll, uh, when I get to the verse, I'll, I'll let you know. But it was like, whoa, three weeks ago, I go, whoa. I love stuff like that. Verse 29. Yet I say to you, this is Jesus still speaking. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. Anyone get an Amazon package this week at your door? You contributed to the uh, Bezos fund there. He's the richest man in the world. Solomon is richer than Bezos and Bill Gates and everybody else put together. This guy's filthy rich in that day. He's got everything. And Jesus says, not even Solomon was clothed like a flower. Isn't that something? Verse 30. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, he's talking about Father God now, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown in the furnace. Will he not much more clothe you? You have a little faith? Another one, he meet your needs, Jim? Verse 31. Watch, here it is. Do not worry then, saying, what, shall, what will we eat? What will we th drink? And what will we wear for clothing? It's in there. Yeah, Jim, he said that earlier. Yeah, I know he said it earlier, but he adds something different in the verse. There's a word in there that wasn't earlier in verse 25. It's the, I never caught, I honestly never caught it. He says, in verse, look at 31 again. Do not worry then. What's the next word? Sane. Sane. Watch yourself talk. Watch what you tell yourself. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Why? Let me tell you why. If you're a follower of Christ, you better start warming up to the fact that you're in a spiritual battle every second of your life. That the spirit world is more real than the physical world that we walk in right now. That there are angels and there are demons. As a follower of Christ, I have warring angels around me, but there are demons that try to get in my head. The devil himself never messes with me. I'm not big enough fish in the pond for him to mess with me. But he tries to get in my head. He tries to spit thoughts in my head. I've been studying the Bible 40 years. I read this Bible average of two to three hours a day of study, just, just the study time before I even, even study more for messages. 
It's my life. I love it. I think any pulpit preacher has to study like that or else don't even bother. Just like you with your job, how good you are because you work a lot of hours in that. You need to study a lot if you're going to step in a pulpit. You need to pray a lot if you step in a pulpit. You need to get rid of the little addictions, you're going to step in a pulpit. But I've been studying 40 years. And let me tell you what I know. I know that the devil and every demon, they are not all-knowing. And they are not all-powerful. And they are not ever-present, like everywhere at the same. I know that. I know that Jesus is a king. Satan is called a prince of the power of the air. A king is more powerful than a prince. I know that Satan's teeth have been pulled at, at the cross. Jesus beat that boy up. And so with all that, I know, I, I, in the scripture, I know that demons, and devils, they cannot read my mind. They do not know what I am thinking. And I like that. But I also know that they're not stupid. But sometimes I am. And sometimes I give them a little bit of help when I start to state my worries out loud. I state, state my criticisms out loud. I state my gossips out loud. And they pick up on that. They go, huh, did you hear that? Fellow demon. And so I learned also that they don't speak in the second, third person. If I say, man, I'm worried about this. They don't say, yeah, you're worried about that, Jim. They don't do that in my head. They, they do like, here's how they sound. They go, and I'm worried about this too. And, and I'm worried about that. See, they speak first person in my head. See, they make me think they're my thoughts. They're not my thoughts. Remember their fortress and strongholds in the mind? Anyone remember that? So I'm not going to give them any help. I'm not going to say things that will help them. Let me tell you what I've also realized over the years. They cannot read my mind, but they will read my facial expressions. And some of us walk around, man, the devil goes, I know exactly what that person's going through. We sit there with that face on, man, they read us so fast, they start popping in our mind thoughts. You got to be careful. Watch your self-talk. Change your self-talk. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Don't give him an upper hand. Give him nothing. Be careful if you're going to overcome worry. You be careful with that kind of stuff right there. Number three in your notes, and that's this. I choose where I let my mind go. I choose where I let my mind go. Now watch this. Verse 33. This is a big Jesus statement. He says, But seek first his kingdom and his, say it, righteousness. Do the right thing, Jim. And all these things will be added to you. It's such a simple problem. Now, this is a quick point that I'm going to use that verse again for point four and really expand it. Now, I choose where I let my mind go. Worriers, I choose where I let my mind go. Let me show you with a really simple question. How many of you yourself, you drove a car yourself to here? You drove a car here today. You, you drove, okay. That means, let me get this straight. I'm, I'm trying to understand you. That means you actually got in the car. You actually turned it on, or now buttons. You put it in reverse, not like this. You have a little spinner now. Huh, isn't that weird or what? And you backed out of the driveway. Then you spun it again, put in drive. You drove here, whether you certain surface streets, freeway, off ramps. You got here to have focused praise, worship, and word time. Am I right? You did? Yes. So does that mean that you also have the ability to take your mind to a place of focused worship and praise and word? Is that possible? Yes. Hey, you better believe it. Question. So let me expand upon that thought. Be honest. Let's be honest. Come on. Otherwise, we don't heal up. If you're non, not a follower of Christ, let me just be with Christians. It's very hard for Christians to tell themselves the truth. I'm just, just being honest. The longer we're a Christian, the harder it is to tell ourselves the truth. How many of you, because this is one of my problems. You guys want to know one of my problems? I bet. <laughs> I get a thought in my head, and then I add that negative thought to it. 
and another negative thought to it, and another negative thought to it, and another negative thought to it, and another thought, and another thought, and another thought, and, another thought, and pretty soon it's so big in my head, it looks nothing like the original thought in my head. Anybody? Anybody? Raise your hand. I'd like to know who's on my team. Yeah. We know what just happened there? We got in the car of our brain, we started driving to focus praise, worship, whatever it is, and we took an off-ramp. 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 Into all these crazy, worrisome, anxious thoughts. And they start to build and build. How many know that's just the worst place to go? Anybody know that? You don't even hit a destination, do you? It just, the road just keeps going and going and going. And it never ends. So it's better to pull back and say, I can choose where I let my mind go. You better believe it. I'll give you one. Don't even raise your hand. Don't look funny at me. You're in a, you're in a marriage or dating. And the thought comes in, I think they're cheating on me. I think they like somebody else. Uh, uh, uh. See how he's looking at my friend, talking to her? That was, he was too nice to her. Am I right? And here we go, huh? And here we go. And now they're the devil. It all starts in here, okay? Number four, and this is where I'm going to really play it out and have some fun with you, okay? Number four, do not make prayer your last resort. Now, I'm coming down here because i got to illustrate. Every time I get here, every so many years, if it pops up in a series, I use this illustration. So I need a Paul Ben come on up here while I'm reading the verses. So we're going to read verse 32 and 33. of. Uh, these are a couple of ushers here. Um, 32, 33. Uh, they, they were weightlifters in the last Olympic Games. But anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's read these. Watch what Jesus says. For the Gentiles. What's a Gentile again? A non-Jew. Good, you're learning. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. Everybody in the world, the culture, they're all looking for this stuff. For your heavenly Father. Remember your Father who cares about you? He knows that you need all these things. When you had your children, you knew what they needed before they needed it. Am I right? Your heavenly Father's better than you on that one. Verse 33. Here it is, here it is, here it is. But seek first his kingdom and his... Oh, you got to do the right thing. We'll get to that in a second. And all these things will be added to you. Let me just throw a side note on the righteousness thing. We pray, oh God, do this for me, do this for me. He says, would you stop doing that then? Hey, leave my pet sin alone. But we sure want God to do stuff, don't we? Uh Uh-uh. He don't play. If you're a long-term Christian, look, if you just got, became a Christian, yeah, you've just come out of Egypt. God's going to bring you the manna and the water and the quail, take care of you. But once you get near the promised land in there, you got to go to war now. The moment they went and stepped in the promised land, the moment they stepped in the promised land, the manna from heaven stopped. Now you got to go get it. Now you got to battle. You got to live it right. So here's the thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Whoa. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Paul is a younger Christian, so he gets to play God. (laughs) Ben, been a Christian over 20 years. I've known him over 20 years. He gets to be not the devil. You messengered me not to pick on you. And then you do that? No, no, Raul Moreno. Wow. He doesn't want any attention, huh? Ben is stuff. So here's the thing, okay? Seek first the kingdom of God. Here's God. Stay there. If I just chase stuff in my life, where's God? He's not following me because I've got my God. I've made this God in my life and he enjoys it. God's not going to follow. God says, have at it, man. 
And how many of us in this room have got so tired trying to maintain our own stuff? Anybody? You get to that place like, I'm just tired of trying to maintain this. And how many people, not in this room, have ruined their marriage and family just going after stuff? Think about it. If I chase stuff, God's not coming. Because I've made this my first priority. This is the thing. Are you following me? Okay, look, look, hold the thought. You make prayer your first resort, but Christians make it their last resort. And here's what we do. We finally, it's all our life's falling apart. You know, this, I'm, I'm praying now, God. You got to do all this like in 10 minutes. <laughs> no, you grew this crop over a couple years. And you think we're going to uproot that in 10 minutes? See, and it's not that God is a mean God. He's sitting there going, you'll never learn a lesson if I just keep solving your problem every time. You're going to go back and do the same thing. Here's how we do it. We go, Lord, oh, Lord, this is our prayer time. Lord, please, I cast all my cares upon you. Here it is. I finally give you all my concerns and anxiety. Here, take it, take it. We go, whew, that five-minute prayer time, I feel really good, man. And then 20 minutes go by. And then we go, I'm taking it all back, God, because I need to worry about it. I need to stress it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So Jesus says, don't seek stuff. Ready? Ready. Seek God. <laughs> I already feel like I'm walking toward Jesus. If I seek Jesus first and live righteously for him. What follows me? What? Which, which way would you choose then? I would seek him first. Because you see, and here's the thing, Christian, if you follow Christ, you realize that everything you have and everything you own and everything you think you've made happen, it all belongs to God. That's just the way it is. And when it belongs to God and we let God have it, guess what God takes care of? His stuff. It follows me. He brings it to me. But it's his stuff. And he takes care of it. But, no offense, anybody, I could be a bonehead all day if I want to. Go back. But if I chase stuff, chasing stuff, chasing stuff, God says, have at it. And I live in stress. And aren't you tired of doing that? Honestly. How many of you in this room? Honestly. Because this is not an easy one. You have found that seeking God first and making all your stuff His and everything, you find it to be true. That stuff will follow you. It's just a lot easier life. It's just a lot easier life. This is a Jesus truth. Amen. Amen. Give these guys a big hand. I'm going to give you two thoughts, and then I'm going to let you go. Here's the first one. Just, these just came to me, um, I think, Friday, maybe Thursday, maybe yesterday. I don't remember. Um, a lot of people talk to me. Um, they think I know something. I don't know. They think I've learned a few things for over 40 years of you know, studying. Um, school of hard knocks. Trying to take wisdom from the Bible. And here's a big, and this concerns me, and it's just, it's sad, it, it actually saddens me, and sometimes it angers me, not at the people, but at like what the enemy does. But I'll hear people who are around my age, you know, 33, 34. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'll hear, and no offense to anybody here, but please listen to me. And young people, please listen to me. I'll hear older people say, Oh, wait, I got to give the verse. Let me give the verse. Put the verse. 34. Jesus finishes by saying, so do not worry about... How many people worry about tomorrow? We're worrying about today, huh? Let me attack on tomorrow. For tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of itself. Have you ever noticed that? 
It's a great, great truth. Now, don't worry about tomorrow. Now, I, I, I talk to older people. Every so often, I talk to them and they say, and they're worried about tomorrow. Do you remember a series I did either earlier this year or late last year called Greater Later? Anyone remember that? That if I make good decisions in my life as I go along, I don't worry about later because I'm walking in righteousness, his right way. But I hear older people say, I'm I'm worried about retirement. I, I won't have enough to retire. Well, it doesn't matter really how much money you make. Yes, no, it really doesn't. I've watched people make probably half the money you make, whatever you make, and I've watched them save, and I've watched them live a good life, and I've watched it. So we get caught up in stuff. But I've watched people, and they, they're worried about tomorrow because they didn't make the right decisions to get to that place in life. Look, listen to me. You want to make right decisions along the way so that later on in life, you're not worried You're in debt, credit cards, just start paying those things down. Make right decisions. Live right. Live within your means. Tell yourself no. Start to put into retirement, work a job, and do that. Now, that's one thing. Let me give you one more. So, um... Megan, our secretary, front desk secretary. Megan's great. Anybody, you guys know who Megan is? Yes. Megan Travers. She's just great. She's got a great personality. You know, uh, I could, I'm really good at mimicking her and mocking her, but I won't do that here. <laughs> um, but, you know, she was, pre- she's out here, been pregnant. She's ready to pop. In fact, I almost got a pin one time. <laughs> See if she'll pop. Well, she had her baby three weeks ago. She posts a picture of her baby boy on Facebook. I look at the picture. Now, Megan and her husband are blonde-haired, you know, like white, you know, European descent people, you know, Northern Europe, whatever it is, you know. And I, I, the kid has black hair. (laughs) So I text her, you know, she's my secretary. I text her, I go, Megan, I go, Black hair, do you have a Mexican child? <laughs> you know, so she goes, well, Levi, I go, and I said, what I said was, I go, I'm going to call him Pancho. <laughs> and that's what I call him, I call him Pancho. She goes, and so she, no, I, and she sends me a picture back of herself as a baby, and she had jet black hair. Okay. So, Thursday, she brings little Poncho to the office. His name is Levi. But I like Poncho better, don't you? Poncho Travers. And, and she brings Poncho in. And everybody's gathering around because you're going to dote on the baby. And she, everybody's taking turns holding her. And, and so on. Him... <laughs> You really want it, don't you? <laughs> and so I, I take Pancho. And I read this in a book about two to three years ago, and it stuck with me. And I, I looked at Megan, and I go, because little Pancho's. I said, Megan, who are the only people that do not worry? She said, babies, children. That's right. They don't worry. They think you're going to do it for them. You're their father or mother. They're not concerned about one thing. They don't worry. And didn't Jesus say we're to have childlike faith? That he's our heavenly father. Are you not worth much more than birds? Does he not know as a father what you need before you need it? Come on, man. The only people that do not worry are the little children. And we're to have childlike faith in our life in Jesus. Amen. I'm done. Hello, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the message. 
And I would just like to invite you to share that with as many people or one person that you think just might need that. Because not only do we want the Bible to be truthful, which it is, we want it to be useful. And we try to make it as practical as possible for me, for you, and for any friends that we have, especially those far from Jesus that might need that. And another thing too you can do is you can now subscribe to the New Beginnings YouTube channel so that when these messages are archived, it'll pop up and let you know it's there and you can go back and watch that or once again, share it with somebody else. So we just hope you have a blessed day. Once again, hope this thing ministered to you and look forward to